I would like to talk about The Witcher 3, if you would so let me. Because recently, CD Projekt Red released one of the biggest updates that the game has ever seen. I mean, The Witcher is one of the biggest RPG franchises. It spawned a TV show that had some success. But The Witcher 3 is kind of in the Hall of Fames of not only one of the best open world games ever, but one of the best games of all time. And recently, well, they released Red Kit. This Red Kit though is incredible and it shows off some of the new things that we're gonna be able to do within the game itself because as much as the game is huge, there's a massive amount of story side quests and a world to explore, of course, people thought it's not enough. I mean, one of the comments I think explains it pretty, pretty well. Someone says that The Witcher 3 is the new Skyrim for modding, and that's looking like the way that it's going to go because this red kit is essentially adding in modding tools for everything that you could ever want to do. Apart from making an entirely new game, you can pretty much mold The Witcher 3 however you want. Creating cutscenes, Yep, you can create entire cutscenes. And what this opens up is a plethora of more opportunities because we've had mods for The Witcher, but a lot of it is adding in troops, units. I mean, I saw a mod that you could control AI like a little bit like Mountain Blade, which is kind of cool. And of course, you can add in new textures and characters. But not only can you do that now, but this is within inbuilt molding tools made for The Witcher 3, giving you way more options, but being able to create cutscenes with them. In fact, I think there's actually a clip here that we can see them yeah here you can see this ghoul being keyframe animated and you can do that within the witcher 3 itself four cutscenes with animations of all the custom people i mean on the right hand side we can see well the disgusting texture of this lad but also you can see what looks to be very much like if anyone hasn't used unreal engine 5 their nodal system there it looks a lot like that with the flow in between so i think this is going to be very accessible to a lot of people and that's all going to be implemented within the witch 3 itself being able to edit terrain and environments is also going to be a great feature because you can put down every individual rock, every individual blade of grass. You can make underground caves. You can make cascading waterfalls or new cities. I mean, we see a little bit towards the end of this trailer using the paint on tools to change textures, whether it's sandy beaches, putting down piers or boats, so on and so forth. And it looks goddamn gorgeous. Creating these new environments from scratch and being able to well put in whichever characters you see fit or a horse on top of a roof because who hasn't wanted to do that within the witcher the modern community has already been pretty hard at work though this isn't all that's new in fact it's been tested for quite some time and i've known about it off and on just through the grapevine that there's been people that have been playing with it testing it but on the 21st which is as i'm recording this was yesterday that's when it actually fully came out that everybody can get their hands on it and in terms of installation it's actually pretty easy of course the witcher themselves have started posting stuff on their youtube channel going in depth about how you can get your hands on it a tutorial how to install it it's pretty goddamn easy and of course the red kit means that you can put stuff onto steam's workshop and nexus and gives you all those tools but we also get a look at some of these terrain features on the right hand side we can see things that can be implemented all of our layers as well whether it is the skybox scaffolds uh, bits of texture and environment that could be placed in all these trees and that's all done within the game and I cannot wait to see the stuff that comes out of it. In fact, we don't even have to because that's already been happening. Last Ghost Gaming posted, well, a clip on their YouTube channel about this new Griffin mod, which, okay, it looks a little bit janky. The animation is not quite there, but it actually is a good showcase to see of how much fidelity you can get in some of the textures. I mean, look at this. Look at the fur on the back. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Now, of course, this is using textures and things that are already implemented within the game, but you can put in custom ones. What? I've actually not seen this bit. Why have they made a whale boat mod? And why do I not hate it? Why does it actually look quite good? Okay, Geralt's position is awful. But this, of course, is the only thing that people are going to be doing with mods is just creating the most wild and wacky things, at least to start with, because this is always how it ends up being. You get these morning tours and it takes a good few months for people to start, well, actually researching, putting the time and effort into making something fantastic. But if we go onto YouTube and we actually look at the red kit for The Witcher 3, people have started posting stuff already. Of course, we've got the official Witcher 3 things. We've got people talking about it, but already 
Reddit 3 Red Kit. Witcher 3 Red Kit, new quest testing. People are going in, trying out new things, of course. And what this is hopefully going to do is open up so much more for the community to get their hands on. And I'm hoping the massive amount of respect and development time that's been put in from CD Projekt Red over The Witcher 3 over the last few years is going to be translated to its fan base. I mean, hopefully whatever comes out from CD Projekt Red will release at a bit of a better stage from Cyberpunk. But they've done a fantastic job of turning that around now. And as far as I've heard, I've not personally played it recently, but as far as I've heard that it has actually become a decent game. But it's nice to see that they've not forgotten about the title that really shot them into the limelight. The title that really made this company one of the biggest in the gaming industry putting themselves up there with Rockstar in terms of quality before more recent years. But this seems like a first step for them to claw it back. I mean, the modern community is one of the most important parts of a game franchise because you can make the self-titled game and the base games as good as you want. And that's how you can grow up your initial fan base, especially when it comes to story and creating immersive open worlds like The Witch has done. But when it comes to longevity, there is nothing like a modern community. We've seen it in games like Mountain Blade, a game, especially Warband, that is still active to this day because of mods. And I mean, the famous one, Skyrim. I saw a video very, very recently of some incredible graphics mods coming out for Skyrim and it absolutely overhauls the game. I mean, look at this. Skyrim Enhanced Edition just holds nothing on this kind of thing. It is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen within a game. And this is what makes Skyrim so great. This is why Skyrim is still around to this day because modders have kept it going. And the first step to that is to bring in out good modding tools. Mountain Blade 2 Battlelord did it a couple years after its release. Kingdom Come Deliverance did it a few years after its release. Unfortunately, by that point, it was too late. And that is a good showcase of what happens if you don't have a strong enough community when modding tools finally release. That game kind of died off because its mods just didn't come out fast enough. But I think Witcher 3 has such a big fan base and such a loyal fan base that still talk about it to this day. And it's still so much in the zeitgeist with the TV show, whether it is positive or negative the books are still incredibly popular and hopefully we're looking into the future for cd project red because cyberpunk was a disaster on release but has recovered now and i think at this point they're probably going to be looking at what's next for the company the next game it's been almost a decade since the witcher 3 and i'd like to see a new game in this franchise and i think it could be on its way is this just them saying we're leaving the game be you guys do with what you want and that's their way of keeping the game going without having to put development time in maybe that could be what this red kit is or we could be seeing a remaster of the first two games at some point in the future that is on the cards and i think people are kind of looking forward to seeing something there bringing it up to the modern day but if we can get modding tools even in titles like that i mean skyrim have shown that doesn't mean that remasters are all that necessary